little time. When I work my messages, I got a little time. He said, great, you got two and a half hours. Work it all you want. <laughs> and I thought, well, that'll work. So, uh, uh, so let me just ask a question, two of them to start off with. And then uh, here's what I really know about this message. If you'll pull it out of me, you'll get exactly what the Holy Spirit wants you to have. And it, yippee, thank you. Uh, that was just an analogy, but that, that was good. Uh, so here it is. What do you see in 2023? What do you see? Isn't that clever? Thank you for that, though. Uh, but more importantly, what does God see in 2023? You know, I've read scripture. It says I'm victorious, that I'm an overcomer, that I have all sufficiency and all supply. 2023 is going to be that year for me. How about you? It's going to be so powerful this year. I believe that 2023 is going to be an explosion of revelation. You know what that means? For me, that means I've read the Bible all the way through. But I want it to explode with revelation in my heart. All of a sudden, when I read it, he says, that's for you. That's for you. So I want you to start thinking, what do you see in 2023? It could be the same as 2022 or same as the last 10 years, or it could be a new year of first for you. It's going to be so good. I want to talk about something that will cause you uh, to settle for less. I think we do that a lot. It'll keep you in the same life situation that you are right now. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, so exciting. And uh, I want to talk first about, does anybody know Brenda Gant? And if you don't know her, I, I watch her all the time because my wife watches her. And this is an older lady. I believe she's 72. 75. Holy buckets. That's good. 75 years old. And what she decided is she is just a wonderful grandma. And she kind of noticed that younger generation didn't know how to cook. So she cooks good southern food. So she just got this idea to take her iPhone. And before she used to put it on an oatmeal can and she would just direct it and then she would cook a meal and she would film it and then she put it on YouTube. Well, now today she has over 3 million subscribers, and uh, it's not real quality work. It's her with an iPhone, and now she's got at least a stand, but she cooks every day. And this is what I know. All of a sudden, she made a decision to make a change. And she said, instead of saying, you know, young ladies can't cook anymore. Uh, they don't have that ability. She said, no, I'm going to make a decision. I believe enough is enough of what us speaking over the next generation. We're going to speak something else. She's going to make a change. So now she puts a video out almost every day. Is that correct? Yeah. And I watch a lot of them. And what's so cute to me is that she goes, now this is healthy. As she drops a stick of butter in. You know, now this is really good for you. You know, if you make it. And I'm thinking, I don't know if that's exactly true. Uh, it is. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you what, I love butter. I eat the fire out of butter. I don't eat butter. In it. Now I have butter in a spray container and I spray it on, which is like pretend butter. It almost tastes like butter, but it's not really butter. Uh, anyway, so man, well, how did we get on that? Good old butter. So this is what I want you to think about in 2023. 2023 what are you sick and tired of? What have you in your life said enough is enough? You know, what are you believing for that I will not live another month like this? What is that for you? Because this is what he arrested me on the way home. He said, you know, what are you tired of? And I said, Lord, I'm tired, man. I just started going in my mind. I'm sick and tired of this. And I don't like it. I've had enough of this. And I want to live like this. He said, all right. He said, 2023 can be a new year for you. But it's going to start with you being sick and tired of being sick and tired and you make a change. Yeah. And we're going to get to the end of New Year resolutions, why we don't do that as believers. We're going to talk about something different that the Lord gave me. So how about this? Are you tired of living paycheck to paycheck? Now, for some of you, you maybe you don't live that way. Fantastic. But there are many that do. that live paycheck to paycheck, that you're waiting for that paycheck. In fact, that paycheck's gone already before it ever shows up. You know, are you tired of living that way? Because if the Lord is my protector and my provider, and he has all sufficiency for what I need, then why am I living beneath that? What is happening? So to me, there's a chasm that's happening between what the word says and what we're experiencing as believers. If God put it in our heart to do it, should there be enough money there? Absolutely. So good. How about this? Um, 
Maybe it's like this. Uh, I'm going to step on and meddle a little bit. Maybe for you, it's losing weight. Every time you get on the scale, you're sick and tired of that number. I hate that number that's on that scale. Well, can I ask you, what number does it possibly have to get to before you make a change? Now, for me, I wasn't necessarily wanting to lose weight. It happened a little easier for me. I got sick. I lost 21 pounds. It was fantastic. It was easy. Uh, the sickness wasn't easy. And, uh, but what was crazy about it, but then I made a choice. And I said, I want to live a long life. Uh, I just read about a guy that had a business till he was 107 years old. And he was the CEO to 107. Could you imagine his kids saying, for the love, I'm never going to get an inheritance because that guy's 107 years old. Is that nutty? Why not? Why not it be us to be healthy? So for you, maybe it's that for all these years you've been saying, I want to be uh, this weight. I want to look this way. I want to be healthy. Why not 2023? You know, don't be in condemnation to it. It is not necessarily easy. And right on the front seat, we have a coach that's phenomenal. Helped my wife lose a hundred and several pounds. And uh, so it's been really good. <laughs> oh, better stop. Uh, better stop. Maybe it's for you. You feel you've been constantly on the sideline and other people get attention. In the ministry especially. Why is it I'm gifted and I'm on the sidelines constantly Why other people that I'm more gifted than, maybe that you're thinking, and they get promoted. Here's the big idea, and I always have a big idea. Nothing changes if nothing changes. If you want to lose weight, nothing changes if nothing changes. So I'm not a slave to 1,670, ca 1670 calories every day, but I know that number real good. And on our trip down to Candace's, I made the choice. I want chocolate chip cookies, 240 calories. I'm going to eat them and love them. And uh, popcorn, man, I put that down. I can have seven cups of popcorn. But here's what I want you to know. You have to have passion for that. I'm going to get a little ahead of myself. But when you decide to make a change, there needs to be corresponding action. And if you don't have passion for that action, it'll wane. And that's why New Year's resolutions don't work. You have to have passion for the action. Because, man, I'm going to do this no matter if anybody's doing it with me. I don't care what it is. So for me, with I'll just say the way thing, when I go to the scale and the number's higher, what the, what? <laughs> so it's really weird. To, but I'm looking at long-term goals. I want to be healthy. So good. Listen to this. The devil roams seeking what? Whom he may devour. Yeah, you got it good. Devour. <laughs> wow. There's too much sugar. Uh, not sugar. Yes, sugar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're not a threat when you settle for less. When you don't know who you are in Christ and you're always going to be broke, he loves it because you'll never achieve what you were supposed to achieve. It could be that a missionary comes through and he says, buy that man a motorcycle. He needs it. He said, well, Lord, I don't have enough money to buy that because you're living less than where I appropriate. I mean, set you to. And uh, work with me on this, guys. It's going to get in you. I'm not even going to tell you how to do it. I'm just going to encourage that you can make change. <laughs> You'll never reach your full potential until you've had enough. Had enough. So I'm just stewing over this on the way home. And I, I, I looked at my finances and I, I, he said, are you satisfied with that? Because if you're satisfied, he's satisfied. That's true. He said, you satisfied? I said, not hardly. I want enough in there that my bank can't hold it. Why? And he said this to, something to me, and he doesn't talk audible. He just comes out of my spirit, right? And he says this, that if money doesn't have you, I'll get money to you. And if you allow money to go through you, I'll make sure you have everything you need at every appointed time. And money's just a tool. That's all it is. It's just a tool. T.D. Jake says this. There's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. Man, I am made up in 2023. My mind is made up. 
that my finances are going to be different than 2022, right? That my health is going to be supernatural, just like the Word says it's going to be. My relationships are going to be more than I could ever imagine. How about you? I don't have any friends. I hear this all the time. People want to be your friend. But here's the first thing. What does the Word say? If you want friends, you first must be friendly. That's a good one. Uh, really good. So today I want you to draw the line. Only you can decide. So we're drawing some lines today about some situations. No one can make you make up your mind. Because here's the deal. You could have dreams and hope they happen. We call that unfulfilled. So here's what's going to happen if it's weight loss for you. And let me tell you why I'm harping a little bit on that. Just a little bit. Because it's not because of you losing the weight that I necessarily want you to do it. It's because your race is cut short. And you are supposed to go to the Congo, but you can't make it up a hill because you're overweight. So the Lord's saying, make a change. Enough is enough today. Finances for me, I need to get, I have a real victory over healing. When he, anything comes into my body, I immediately speak the word. Finances is different. I think this way. How can I make it happen? And he said, gosh, and Lord, I know the Lord's saying this to me. I am so limited by your finances. You limit me so much by your finances. In fact, right now, your finances are pitiful. They're limited. And so I won't go any more my finances, but uh, it is. We're going to have fun. So what you're going to get with it. Uh, <laughs> What I'm giving you is what I typically call a shotgun approach. I'm going to shoot a lot of nuggets out there. Grab what works for you. Uh, when you got two and a half hours, you get the nuggets and the shotgun approach. So we're, we're good. But this is something I noticed about when I counsel with people and I hear about all the things happening in their life. This is what I say. Make a change. And it almost silenced the conversation. And I had a pastor tell me this once. He said, guns in your lap, make a change. And I thought, does that mean I can shoot everybody I don't like necessarily? <laughs> and he goes, no, that's not the case. But, uh, oh, it's just crazy. I, I, I have no idea. Here we go. Let me give you some cool things. When you get your birthday cake and you have more and more candles on it, which now I get a single number, bless their heart. It's, I get two, six zero oh, instead of 60 candles. But you ever think this? I thought I would be somewhere different. I've sat down and 60 years old. I said, how many years do I have left, Lord? He said, well, words is 120 until you're satisfied. And I said, well, I want 120 years of really healthy body so I can still run my race. But you ever thought about, you know, at 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 years old, Check this out. Do you know Henry Ford didn't invent the Model T till he was 45 years old? Who's younger than 45? You can invent a car. Just joking. I, I love this. Vera Wang, does anybody know her? She didn't design her first wedding gown until she was 40. Yep. Change is not affected by time. It's amplified by the Lord. Yeah. So... So when Vera Wang said, you know what I want to do? I want to make wedding dresses. I want to make a change. She was working for someone else. Her designs were fantastic. And she said, enough is enough. I'm going to design for myself. It was so good. How about Betty White? Do you know her? What a nutbag. She is so funny. But uh, she, be she became so successful. She's so funny. I can't say that. She's so funny. Uh, she's, not, she's a nutbag. That's the truth. You know, she didn't become wildly successful till she was 51 years old. 51. Call the girls. 51 years old. How about this? How about the guy that purchased the idea of McDonald's? Ray Kroc. You know how old he was? 52 years old. And he came up with this idea of doing the McDonald's franchise. One more. KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken, seven, 11 herbs and spices. My wife used to be a manager there. I, I, would, I loved, what? Yeah, she was. And all of a sudden, I wanted those seven, seven, 11 herbs. They're, they're gone. They don't give it to you. He was 62 years old. So here's what I want to challenge you with. I don't care your age. That's a number. God can amplify time like you've never seen. 
So good. When it comes to the scale, I just have five or six of these I'm going to read. Uh, for you, it may be losing weight. We've already talked about this. Uh, maybe your bank account. How about this? This is a good one. Procrastination. Anybody procrastinators? I'm a procrastinator, but I turn it to the positive. I'm a crisis management. Yeah. Huh? Come on now. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Forget that procrastination. I just push it to the very limit, and I'm a crisis management. Put me in a crisis management situation. I'll make it happen. You know, today, you can say enough is enough on that. You know, calendar hacking, that book will revolutionize your life. But do you know you write down, is it every minute or every 15 minutes? So basically, you account for every minute of every day. And I think, that's too much work. Who wants to do that? But the truth is, you know how much time we waste? And then we say we don't have time? Procrastination, if that's your thing... A lot of times we procrastinate because we build the project so big in our mind that we don't want to start. And, uh, uh, hey, I'm speaking to you right, on, right over there. So, anyway, how about this? Past hurts. Past hurts. We nurse and rehearse those things, and I realize there is pain associated with many things. And I'm not belittling that at all. But if you've been carrying it for 10 years, it's time to say enough is enough and don't let it dictate your life anymore and here's what we're going to get towards the end sometimes we may need to get some help with this you don't have to do it on your own there are others that have walked through the exact same thing that you've walked through and have victory on the other side uh, so true addictions and i'm just going to give you a few things if you're facing an addiction today's the day to say enough is enough and i don't want you to think i can do it in my own ability if you could have done it in your own ability what would happen you would have already done it. You would have had victory. So good. How about this? <laughs> Lord, thank you. You're just lazy. Just lazy. And uh, you know what? Your idea of a wonderful day is binge watching a complete series on Netflix. And that was a successful day. And in between that, you ate six things of ice cream. And man, it was a great day. It's a good day. You're lazy. Be motivated. Because, see, a workman's worthy of his hire. And I see a lot of people, I don't have enough to make ends meet. I'm stepping, I get it, toes are out there. But the bottom line, if you're lazy, own it. Just own it. And you could come up to me and say, I'm lazy. I'll help you with lazy. lazy. Man, I will find some things. We'll get you going uh, with that. But today's the day to say what? Enough is enough. I'm not going to live another day like this. Because here's what I know about God has a wonderful plan, a victorious plan, supernatural plan for you where you're going to make influence like you couldn't even imagine. Oh, my goodness. And, and I want to say this. Some of this has been modeled by your parents. You know, it's not totally your fault. I get that. Uh, now, for my family, my dad was a workaholic. He modeled working 18-hour days. I have that work ethic. But he didn't model finances to me. He didn't understand health and healing. When he was healed of cancer, he couldn't believe it happened. He went to a spirit-filled church. They prayed over him. He went back to the doctor. He was healed of cancer. But he still fought emphysema the rest of his life and died from it. Didn't have a revelation of healing. I'm going to give you three more, and then we'll go on. Maybe for you it's depression. It's offense. And I first have to say there is clinical depression. I understand there's some medical things going on. But I know that in Christ we can have victory over that. And all I know is that if I say, you know, I will not live another day depressed. Yeah. Enough is enough. Today I'm done with that. Yeah. And we'll talk about that. And this is a big one I'll leave with this. Fear. Yeah. I've been running through my mind. What's the worst that can happen? And I was witnessing to someone, and I said, what's the worst that could happen? The thought came up. I said, Lord, he could shoot me. That's the worst that could happen, and that's no good. And uh, that didn't happen, just so you know. We're having fun. Listen to this. The moment you make up your mind that you've had enough, it's time for change. I'm not living this way any longer. You become a threat to the devil. Because you know what he's saying? Wait a minute. I don't care if they're a believer as long as they're a defeated believer. 
He doesn't care about that. What he cares about is all of a sudden when you rise up with authority and you start speaking the word, he goes, what the heck came over them? All of a sudden you start seeing victory in your finances and you're telling other people and your body's healthy and whole. Your marriage is supernatural all of a sudden. And the devil says, my gosh, if everybody gets this revelation, I'm going to have some trouble. So listen to this. The moment you make up your mind that you've had enough, it's time for change. I'm not living this way. You become a threat to the devil. He loves you living below your plan. Man, just loves it. I'm going to give you two examples out of the word, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, can you turn to Mark 5, 25 through 34? Mark 5, 25 through 34. If anybody knows this, uh, oh, well, you, you know it now. I was going to see if anybody knew a little Bible, Bible quiz. When we used to do it. I'm going to read this to you and we're going to analyze this. Was there a time in this story where she said enough was enough? Yes. You know, and we're going to look at that because here's what I want you to leave with. Everybody can do this. Everybody. I, when you say enough is enough with your finances, you may not see an overnight victory, but you will see a victory happen. But the moment you pray it, what do you confess? The word over it. And we'll go with this. So here we go. So it says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. So she had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Stay right here. Can you go back to that verse? And uh, had suffered many things from many physicians. She had heard a lot of reports that were contrary to what Jesus was speaking at that time. Just like what's happening in your life right now, you're hearing a lot of different reports that are contrary to what the word tells you you are. Yeah. Is that true? Let's keep going. Uh, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Let's keep going. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. One more. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So let me ask you a question of what we just read. And you may not remember the verse. What was the moment that she said, enough is enough? She did spend all her, you guys are so cute. I'm trying to listen to everybody. And it's, it's this. And the Lord, there's no wrong answer. We're just doing a little diagnosis of the Bible. We're just having a little fun with it. What's that? Okay. Let me give you what I believe it is. I believe it's verse 27. Can you go to 27? When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd. Because here's the thing. She could have stayed home. Because she was unclean, and the practice at that time was that she was not to fellowship or to congregate with anybody in the community because she was unclean. So she had heard everything from the doctors, and all of a sudden she's sitting in her house and saying, enough is enough. I'm not going to live another day with this sickness. So she steps outside of her house, and she follows behind Jesus. And what does she do? She touches his garment. That was the moment. That was the enough that it was enough. Uh, huh, so good. She had no idea, and, and this is going to be big for you guys. Listen, the Lord exploded this in my heart. You have no idea, she had no idea that 24 hours before, she was going to have a supernatural breakthrough in her body. You have no idea when that breakthrough is going to happen. By faith, when we pray it, it's an immediate response. But what if tomorrow your finances turned around? You go to your bank account, and I, Lord, I don't mind this, and you look in there, there's $27 million sitting in that bank account. Sure enough, you signed up for something many years ago. It was a Bitcoin thing. And man, it came through. I'm not saying it's come that way, but... Uh, it was amazing that the day before when she was sitting in her house with the issue, she had no idea. 
that she was going to have a supernatural breakthrough. But she knew this. If I would say that enough is enough and I'll step outside my comfort zone. And the interesting thing, she didn't care what people thought. So when you're daring to believe, and people say, what makes you believe that your finances are going to turn around? Because Father God said so. What makes you believe that your cancer is going to leave your body? Because my God said so. That's why. Oh, here we go. Questions. What would have happened if she didn't believe the stories about Jesus? Nothing. Uh, what would happen if she stayed in her house? That's right. Didn't reach for Jesus. What would happen? Right. What if she cared about what everybody said? Because I'm sure there was doctors that came that was in that crowd and said, wait a minute. I've been treating you for five years. In fact, I've taken every dime that you have. And you're still not. But what are you doing out here? She didn't care what people think. Can I tell you, you should have a boldness and tenacity this 2023. Because what if 2023 looks completely different from now till the end? I am believing that my finances are turning around. I'm believing that everything that God says that I can have in the word is going to be mine by 2023. I want to think of this. Who has dreams that God laid in your heart a long time ago? Mm -mm -mm. I, it's going to happen. One of the things I'll just give you real encouragement with Pastor Denise is that we are just starting to see things that we saw 25 years ago. That she would be teaching in a college. Just starting to see the beginning of that. And man, I'm encouraging the fire. Or whatever. She's got two books in her that uh, I, I always tell her you should have wrote them along. It would have helped our finance a lot memoir <laughs> if you'd have wrote those things a long time ago. But I say that all the time. But uh, anyway, what's our big idea? Nothing changes what? If nothing changes. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. <laughs> Here we go. Let me give you a second one. John 9. 1 through 11. This is such a good one. John 9, 1 through 11. Let me just read it to you. We're going to do the same thing. So be looking at this, the passage and see what that moment was when he said enough is enough. I'm not living another day like this. And uh, so now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the work of God should be revealed in him. This is a neat passage to go through. We're not going to do it right now. Uh, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Let's go. And as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Are you the light of the world? You sure are. Every place you travel, you radiate God. Every place you travel, people are drawn to you. If you're looking for friends, man, you won't be able to pass through a Starbucks without five people talking to you. I don't know what it's about you, Reggie, but man, I just want to say hi. What's your name, Reggie? Oh, man, I, I, could I be your friend? No, you're weird. Stay away from me. Uh, but it might get to that point. Sorry. Here, when, he, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Salome, he was coming to me, he was a little slow there, which is translated sin. So he went and washed and came back. I'm going to stop. What was his moment that enough is enough? <laughs> when he left with that spit on his eyes. So all of a sudden, Jesus, what did he, he wipes dirt and spit on his eyes. What could he have done? He could have flicked that off. So forget that. I wanted an instantaneous healing. I want something supernatural. So he could have done that, right? And all of a sudden, let's go to the next verse. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen, let's go back. I think I didn't read the seven. And he said to him, go wash in the pool. And so he went and washed and came back seeing. So here was, for me, this is what it was. It wasn't that he said to go do it. It was in him going. That was the decision. So he's walking. Now, I'm thinking, I'm real practical. The pool, it doesn't tell us how far it is away. But I want you to picture you're at the mall, and you got that fountain. A man just spits on the dirt. He wipes it all over. You can't see a thing. And you're walking. What are you doing? That guy, Jesus, spit in my eyes. He said, if I'd go over to this pool that I would have my sight. And he went over to the pool. He washed in the pool. And what happened? 
He came back seeing. I want you to expect results when you speak the word. All of a sudden, I don't want you to keep looking at the bank account every day and going, what the heck? Why is that not growing? It's not growing. It is growing. God's already moving on your behalf. And it will manifest when it's necessary for it to manifest in your life. Because can I tell you this about finances? Some are not ready for wealth. Because you can't handle money. Nobody in here is for the internet. But the truth of it is, if he laid a million dollars on right now, a year later you'd be broke. Because you don't know how to handle money. And so the issue is that, you know, once you got beyond the cars and the homes and like that, then you'll look back. So as God's mercy, he'll only give you what you're able to handle because you could put yourself in more debt. Not, I'm not saying how that's how he always works, but what rose into me is that some people are not ready for that. But he will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory, right? So let's keep going. Let's finish this out. Uh, therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that uh, he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, No, I, I'm him. I'm the guy. And he said, Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes open? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. Stop. So how would this happen in your life? You make a declaration today that you're not motivated naturally. You're not motivated by what you see or hear. I did a sermon series. It'd be why you go look at it. It says, I am only motivated. I'm always and only moved by the Holy Spirit. We're going to get into how do we do this practically. Uh, verse 7 says, as he said to him, go wash in the pool. And he went and washed and he came back healed. Here's the crazy thing. If God tells you to do something really nutty, go do it. Go do it. Let me wrap up. Mac Hammond has a saying, successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do occasionally. Uh, and I'll end with this. Action will follow your decisions. I've had enough in this area, so I will do this. Uh, I'm tired of living this way. The action says, so I will. And this is where it's not a naturally. Seek the Lord. It may be something totally different. God's viewpoint, what is in an area that you've settled for less in your life? I just want to close with this. Think about it right now. Do you have a pen? Can you write it down? And I want this to be before you 365 days this next year. As an encouragement, what is an area that you have settled for less than what God says you can have? Remember, nothing changes if nothing changes. You got something? Everybody should have some area. I don't care how victorious you're living in life. My marriage is fantastic, but my marriage can be better. Did you just say absolutely? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a positive. All right. Uh, we, I'll tell you, for me, with my health, my next step is working out. Do I want to work out? No. But I know it's necessary because <laughs> when I tried to do a pull-up, I couldn't do one. But uh, So I got a gym membership a month ago. How many times have I went? The goose egg. <laughs> but this is what I've learned. I hope that I go results in no action. So I'm just going to start going in the morning. I'm, I can't do Josh at 4.30 or whatever he does. Good night, he gets up so early. I may do a 6 uh, with that. So what area are you tired of being that way? Sick and tired of being there. What area? When you think about this area of your life, you say, gosh, enough is enough. What is that area? 
And I want you to think of this. I will not live one more day like this. Decision change or being fed up or enough will always be followed by action. So I talk about New New Year's resolutions and then I'll close. Resolution says this. It's a decision or determination to make a firm resolution to do something. Most uh, resolutions are done in natural ability. And you know what? I talk to people about a month later. How's that going? Well, it's good intention. (laughs) But, you know, we didn't kind kind of do there. You know. (laughs) Change requires action. Without passion, action will be unrealized. When action wanes, the desire for change is unrealized. I'll say it again. Change requires action, but action without passion will be unrealized. When action wanes, the desire for change is unrealized. And that's why New Year's resolutions don't work. Because you didn't have the passion for it when you started it. So... Over the next couple of weeks, we have a couple things that's going to happen. And I'm going to have Pastor Denise talk about it. What does God see for you in 2023? You can't even imagine what he sees for you. This is how exciting. When I was driving home, I, I got a little, what if whatever you touched was successful? Because you have wisdom from God. Yeah. Revelation explosion. Man, breakthrough. Dreams become reality. Uh, what if... And the only reason I'm harping on finances is because Jesus talked a lot about finances in the word. But what if you never had to worry about what's in the bank account? You only were motivated by what God told you to do. Wouldn't that be cool? You make enough off the interest in your bank account that you can fulfill everything that God has. I'm not necessarily doing a prosperity message. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about our authority in Christ. Last statement. What you see in 2023 is more powerful in your life than what God sees for you in 2023. What we're going to talk about over the next few weeks, uh, when we can, is I want to give you tools to help you be successful, to be in faith for those things that you're believing for. And one of them is don't keep them to yourself. Man, I'd love to hear what your dreams and hopes are, what you're believing for, because I'll put it on my refrigerator. And man, I'll be praying. I pray for your business probably every other day. Just pray for your business. For your house, man, I'm speaking life over that house. Wouldn't it be cool if Supernatural, someone has dropped off and said, hey, I don't know why, but you need this. Can I tell you something just, and I'll close with this. Uh, We had a financial need, and someone came up to us and said, I'm not sure why you need this now. I was going to give it to you later, but the Lord says to give it to you now. And it was exact amount that we needed to take care of something that was going on at the time. Don't be surprised when God starts moving. Be looking for it. Uh, I don't run to the mailbox anymore. I used to do that at Rama, looking for money. The old Rama run. See if there was anything like that. I don't do that anymore. But here's the the thought that I want you to leave with 2023 can all be all be different, all together different. Uh, I believe it was Mac Hammond that said this. Someone had made note that he had multiple millionaires in his congregation. Is that correct? Is this? And, uh, and he said they weren't millionaires when they started with the church, but they were millionaires after they had revelation of what Christ said about that. And uh, so I would love nothing else. Hey, if, if all of a sudden in the Metro East they're going, we don't know what they're doing over there. They have like 40, 40 people coming right now. 38 of them are millionaires. Oh, hey. You know, so. so see, that's the excited thing I wanted from the beginning. But, but that's okay. If that's what it takes. What if it's this? I tell you what. I don't know what's going on over there at Generation Church, but my relatives went over there and they were healed in Jesus' name. 
They're walking in victory. I thought that's really good. Uh, it may be that your kids aren't walking the path that you'd like them to walk. But uh-oh, all of a sudden they got a revelation of who they could be in Christ, and 2023 changed it just like that. Why don't you guys stand up? We're just going to pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the word. Father, we thank you for the word. Father, we thank you for the word. See, it's one thing for me to say it, but it's another thing for you to say it. Father, we thank you for the word. Father, we thank you for the victory in the word. Father, we believe the word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're a good God. For Father, today, we say today enough is enough. Father, every area that is not bringing glory to you, we say enough is enough. Every area that doesn't reflect who you are, Father, we're going to make a change. Father, we speak to our finances right now in Jesus' name. They're going to be everything that you say they should be. Thank you, Lord. Father, we speak to our bodies right now that we are healthy and whole. We will run our race. We'll complete our race just like you said we would. Father, I thank you that relationships are being mended right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. You know, there's somebody here or somebody online right now that you are being held back by a thought that's way, way back. That you can't push forward or move forward because of something that happened in your past. Today is a freedom day for you. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that their mind is renewed of who they are in Christ Jesus. No longer affected by what happened in the past. Yes, they may remember what happened, but there's not hurt associated with it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, as we have fun playing games tonight and over the next couple days, Father, we're going to make a declaration. We're going to make a covenant with you that we only speak what you speak. We only read the word and then we speak that word. Father, I thank you that anything contrary to what's in your word is a false truth. And we just speak it in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for this year of 2022, all the victories we've had. Father, we thank you for 2023 because we're going to see what you see in 2023. And we just pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a quick announcement, so I'm going to have you sit for just a second. But it uh, is beautifully tied to Pastor's message. And guys, can I just say this? You know, it would be very easy to exit tonight. Can I just shoot real straight? It would be really easy to be offended by some of the things and some of the places that Pastor ministered. But if you can receive it as from your shepherd, as from a father, who cares about the call of God on your life and the fulfilling of it, um, you will be blessed as a result. I remember distinctly my son, and I've shared this, coming to me and saying, Mom, it starts with you with regard to the church and healthy living. And he said it much more blunt than that. And in that moment, I could have been hugely offended. But I received it as one who cared enough to tell me the truth. And so receive that tonight, however it is, and I trust he covered so many different subjects that the Lord pinpointed it for you, uniquely for you, because he's just that way. He's so good to us, isn't he? And you know, I know there's a lot spoken at the end of the year as we enter into New Year's and into the new year, excuse me, and all these ministers and those that stand in the office of prophet and this sort of a thing, and they speak, you know, these eloquent words into the new year and praise God for that. But so often it's this. I just decided. I just decided. That's it. We decide our future in so many ways. There are some doors that I can't kick open and neither can you. But there are other things that I can change. There are all kinds of things that we can change. And as we close, um, I want to invite you guys um, on a journey with me. On the 10th is my birthday. And I'll be 39. I'm kidding. <clears throat> And uh, for the almost 20th time. Anyway, no, 57. 
And, um, but the Lord ministered this to me, that it would be good for us to employ what I used to call was the Christian F word, fasting. And uh, I did. I, I avoided it like the plague because, you know, uh, it was tough. And yet now there's been such a grace that I intermittent fast daily. I would have never in a million years thought that I could have possibly mastered that. I'm looking at Pastor Joshua right now. I, I never in a million years thought that that could be a place that I would see the hand of God and the grace of God. Uh, and, and so I'm just going to encourage you because there are spiritual disciplines, right, that we can employ in life, worship and study and meditating on the word. And, and of course, this call to prayer. But when we couple together fasting with prayer, there is breakthrough on the horizon. And it's so multifaceted in what it affords to us. It's not that it changes God. I'm going to put that out there. It's not even that it per se changes us, but it does clear out the clutter so that we can better hear and that we can learn to be obedient. So we're not giving into the flesh everything that it makes its demand, right? But instead, we're enabled to be led by the Spirit of God. And so we're going to put it out there uh, this next week to start on the 10th. And uh, we can choose a 3, a 10, or a 21-day fast. Or, of course, you can choose not to do it at all. Of course. Uh, you just be led between you and the Spirit of God. But I want to encourage you that whatever He tells you to do, think about this. Think about Jesus' breakthrough miracle, right? Where was He? He was at the wedding at Cana. And it was before the appointed time, right? He told His mother, it's not yet my time. And yet... What did she say to the servants? Whatever he says to do, do that. So the Lord's not going to lead you into anything wacky and weird. He's going to stick with his word. We understand. But at the same time, sometimes, just like the mud in the eye, it can seem illogical, some of the things that he might ask you to do in and through that time of fast. And so I just want to plant that seed thought. Let that seed thought grow in you. Maybe you've never done a fast before. I hadn't before last year. That was my first time, seriously. After all these years in the Lord, 40 years in the Lord, and I'd never, I'd, I would run. I would run from it. But my goodness, there's been so much good that I have learned and grown as a result. And I would say the single most important thing that I've learned is how to hear the voice of the Spirit of God, even in what I put in my mouth every time I open my mouth. Because you know what it's taught me? Not only what goes in, but what's coming out. So important. So anyway, with that, you know... Um, Yes, we've been going up to the school in Minnesota, and it's called Accelerate Bible Training College. But I'm see seeing and hearing this word, accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. I'm seeing it come up in prayer. I'm seeing it come up in different ministers that are bringing it to the table, to the body of Christ. And the Lord ministered this to me, that back in the day, I had to learn what it was when we were driving, uh, how to drive a manual transmission. Anybody? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. So there are three things that have to happen simultaneously when we're going to accelerate. We have to what? We have to engage the clutch, right? Mm -hmm. We have to shift it into gear, and then we press on the accelerator, and we, as a result, get to where we're needing to go. There are some things in the spirit, guys, that need to shift in our own lives. And I'll leave you with this. E.M. Bounds, who was a prayer a pastor, an author, and an attorney, educated man, but he knew how to be led by the Spirit of God. He said this, God's method is men or mankind. Men search for better methods. God is searching for better men. So the one thing that we can do this next year is press hard into God and everything else will come into order. Press hard into him. Amen. Can I pray a blessing over the food and over you as some of you are heading out, I'm sure, and some of you are staying. Father, we thank you for this time to just be contemplative before you and quiet and just hear the still, small voice of the Spirit of God speaking to our hearts down on the inside, showing us the things that have really ensnared us and shackled us and kept us from moving into the fullness 
of that which it is that you've called us to do and to be in the earth now in this time. And Father, I thank you that our callings, oh, they do keep calling. They keep calling. They keep calling. And so, Father, I thank you that we can exit this night, Father, full of joy and hopeful expectation that no matter what our experience has been in the past, today is a new day. Right now is a new moment in time that we can decide and say yes to your call. Thank you, Father, for the grace that's sweeping in to each one of our lives to equip us to be able to do exactly what it is that you're calling us to do. And beloved, I just encourage you, write that down. Whatever it is, write it down. Keep it before your eyes. Post it where you'll see it on the daily so that you're reminded. Remember Habakkuk 2.2. Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that they that read it can do what? Run, accelerate. Glory to God. So we are dismissed. We bless the food. We're going to have a good time. I pray you can stay. If not, we bless you on the way. We are not having service on Sunday morning. We trust you're going to have a great time with your families. And we're going to come back on the 11th of uh, January, which will be the first day of our fast for our leadership training on a Wednesday night. So it's good, good, good. We love you guys. You are dismissed.